in the end of Bitcoin. Um, what you see with the media related to Bitcoin and the crypto space is anytime the markets go down, Goldman Sachs and these other parasitical uh, financial institutes roll out a lot of negative media. Now, these guys are buying into Bitcoin in the crypto space a lot more than you realize. Um, they're already doing blockchain development themselves. They're already trading it and saying it's uh, our customers when it's actually themselves. But anyway, what you've got right now is Mt. Gox sell-offs. Mt. Gox is a exchange that went into liquidation. Their assets are being liquidated in Japan. There's about two billion dollars worth of Bitcoin that they're trying to get rid of. About once a month, they are dumping this into the market. Um, and as somebody quite rightly said, a lot of this happens before it even hits the market because you can see the wallet moves. So people are already dumping Bitcoin to sit in fiat, wait for it to drop, then they'll buy back at a lower position. So they, they basically, you're getting more for the same money. So when it does go back up, you've instantly increased the value of your assets. Now, one of the things I want to say, this is ideal times for swing trading and day trading. The markets will recover because we're, we're moving into a phase that is going to see some things moving from development, ideas, etc. to actually delivery. So you've got things like GBX, Gibraltar, um, what do you call it? Gibraltar Crypto Exchange. They are not only going to start trading with their own exchange, they're also building businesses on there which are more in line with the initial public offering, IPO, which is in line with being able to go to the stock exchange. GBX is tied in with Gibraltar Stock Exchange, and I'm sure once they get to a certain point, they will be pushing ICOs, which are initial coin offerings, which are the crypto version of an IPO, into the stock exchange so it's floated on two exchanges because there's a lot more money to be made um, that's a prime example of something going from an idea concept delivery development delivery that's nearly there and there's a lot of stuff that is getting to that stage you look at golem golem is already mainnet golem is pushing forward with theirs as well so you've got to understand that when people are saying that Bitcoin's dead and crypto is dead and all this sort of stuff, they're trading in it. I'm not being funny. If I wasn't focused on this stuff, why would I be talking about it? The way Goldman Sachs does. Um, I mean, I, uh, Chase is the same. Chase Bank. Um, you've got to understand these people are investing in it themselves. At the same time telling you not to. And they'll push out some negative media to create a dip, then buy it in themselves, watch it rise, pull it out again, and do it again. Now, as the market becomes more sustainable in the sense that as you get more de developments, the market price is going to continue to rise. If you look at NEO, NEO was only about 2 to $4 when it was ant shares. It's now sitting around $65, $70. Um, but it's never going to head back down to four dollars. It's never going to head down at twenty dollars again, because it's developing projects that are already operational. If you look at Wink W I N Q, um, it's a world Wi-Fi system that allows you to utilize your data bandwidth on your phone, and you can actually sell your access on your from your data plans to other people in the area. That along with being a VPS system as well. Point being is, technology is becoming more mainstream from the crypto space. You also have Howie is now putting a Bitcoin wallet in all its new phones. That is mass adoption. So bearing in mind when people are talking $200,000 for a Bitcoin, the reason is, it can be worth that much, and you are going to see a steady rise in the price of crypto and Bitcoin. But one of the things I do recommend is Mt. Gox is going to liquidate that $2 billion worth of crypto. What I do recommend is actually moving your money to fiat, letting it drop, and buying back at a better position, because you'll end up with more. 
The other thing you can do is swing in day trade up. Now I'm not going to swing trading can be done on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a few days. It's different types of swing trading. But what you're doing is I look at a 24 hour, um, the low price and the high price. And if I know that it's somewhere down here, I'll buy in, wait for it to head towards its 24, 24 hour high and sell it before it reaches it. And then the next day do the same. That's how you can trade up with the same money to make more money. Um, but you can't do that with all cryptos. You've got to analyze this stuff yourself. Day trading, what you've got is, as you know, the markets are going up slowly, especially if you're getting a crash when at the same time, you know the market's not supposed to be crashing. There's people dumping into the market like Mount Gox is. So you know the market's going to head up. You can get multiple transactions as the market goes up because it doesn't go like that, just in one straight upward sweep. It retracts up, retracts up. It's like a roller coaster. And you can trade on all those dips all the way up because you know you, when you get that dip that you buy in again and it's gonna go higher than it was before. And that's where day traders sit and they, they catch these up with trends. So you gotta understand Mount Gox is actually an opportunity because it's actually pushing some predictable trading into the market because I would estimate they're going to do this around once a month um, as such if you can see it happening which you can do because you can see the wallet movements you can prepare for it and increase your portfolio by simply following the trends the upward trends um, so from that point of view, I would say, the, firstly, the crypto space is still evolving. It's still at the early stages. It's nowhere near its peak. It's not even touched it because it's a bit like having the internet before a browser was invented um, or before the net, networking was possible and it's still on dial-up. Dial-up still worked pretty well, but once you started networking things through and got the internet, I'd say, 500k at 512k it was already a major leap now we're at 100 megabytes um, 100, yeah so the point being is it's evolving and we haven't even got to that we're not even a dial up we're still building the modems we're still working out what is a network and I know the, they've got the thing with the blockchain and that out there Blockchain is still not the full potential of the crypto space. It's still the early development versions. There's going to be a lot more coming out of this. There's smarter, smarter contracts being developed, for example. Um, if you understand Ethereum, you understand how smart contracts is operated. And I think the simplest one of that would be with Ripple, where you have a bank trying to send money to this bank and then having an intermediary in the middle so it recognizes the money's got to go from here to here and as an intermediary as a bit of a escrow what happens is it writes three smart contracts because it knows that needs to transfer but what it does is the smart contracts agree everything and once everything's where it should be like the money's going from this account now in the middle and then it's about to head to the the other bank once all the confirmations are there it then fulfills everything on the smart contracts to make that transaction all in one hit. So it'll transfer from there to there because everything's in the right order. Um, that's what smart contract is. Very simple, very basic. But as I'm saying, they are starting to understand that you can make smart contracts smarter. Um, if you understand NAND gates, NOR gates, um, OR gates, and that sort of stuff, there's a prime example of something you could use it in um, by using it a simple yes and no's for different reasons. Um, but anyway, moving on to technology there, so I'll go back to where it was. Um, the, the markets are still growing and they're gonna continue to grow. And I know we're getting on to men that go their own way right now. And one of the things I fundamentally agree, uh, recognize is investments. And some of the best investments right now are in crypto. Um, I do do peer-to-peer -peer lending as well, but in all honesty, the yields on peer-to-peer -peer lending is nothing compared to what you can do in crypto right now. 
If you ask me the same thing about crypto in two years time, I may have actually changed my opinion in the sense that the market volatility has dropped. So some of the risks relating to some of the investments may not be worth touching. But then you do have your solid investments as well, which will be your Litecoin, your Ethereum, your Bitcoin, um, and some others like NEO and VE chain if it gets to where its development needs to be. Um, because by then it's either going to be a hit or a miss. But ultimately, I would say do your own research, look into it. If you're looking for some ways to make some money, it's definitely worth a look. Bitcoin will recover, and even if you trade in and out uh, through GDAX, GDAX, um, you can actually just sit on the sidelines and just take a small percentage here and there. If you can see the markets are gonna take a dip because you watch Mount Gox, you can sell your Bitcoin or whatever into fiat, into dollar or euros, leave it there, let the markets dip and then just buy back again. Something so simple. But I'll leave that for you guys. Thanks for watching.